Hey, yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J show and you guys voted. So let's get started with this community pick, The Amazing World of Gumball, the puppets. It is a popular choice within the animation community and most known for being the episode co-written by the people of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, a popular web series that rarely posts from what I see. This was also requested from what I gather, so tons of you guys really wanted me to talk about it, so let's get into the review. So we start off the episode episode with Gumball and Darwin collecting old toys to give away. I find the setup to this particular episode very natural and quite better than the Ollie. An episode I reviewed as a collaboration with a good friend of mine, which I will link in the card and description below, in which you couldn't believe in that episode what was happening. They bring out the Bop at Extreme, the Tamagotchi, and the Dragonflies, all things that were very popular around the 90s and 2000s, which supports the case that Gumball takes place around on this date. Yes, there is a subject of debate around when Gumball takes place. Not sure if the creator confirmed, but it's something that I've toyed around with making a video about. I'm not sure if I am going to actually pull the trigger and do it, but until then, this happens. The war is at war. See now, this is the gumball comedy I remember and love. It's littered all throughout season 1, season 2, 3, 4, and for some reason they decide to go more dialogue and meta based comedy in season 5, as you've seen in my matchmaker review for instance, as well as the ollie review I did. That's not to say that there is very little slapstick, but the general direction was comedy based on the amazing world of gumballs near masterful grip on animation which generally included tons of slapstick. Gumball picks up a box and it's clear that it is something that he wants to hide. Hide. No, this isn't similar to the episode where Richard was hiding something, but that could have also worked as a concept here. As Darwin takes the box, his voice tells it all. It's puppets that he remembers like the back of his hand, preferably because they were on the back of his hand. He and Gumball go back and forth on whether to play with the puppets, and Gumball mentions that Darwin wouldn't go on a date. I love the joke, but it's just so out of place. Darwin is the last person who really needs to worry about a date. First of all, he hasn't wanted to for four seasons, and you Gumball kind of set him up on a date, so I don't think good old Darwin here needs to worry about the plenty of fish in the sea. Although he gives the box to Gumball, Darwin keeps the puppets, to which we are introduced to Frank and Howdy as well as Grady, although Grady is going to remain a passive role for now. All of these three puppets will be the other and final major characters of the episode. I guess since I already spoiled it, I also want to say that despite Gumball crossing different types of animation, there are only a few characters that have been animated in more than one medium. Besides these puppets here, you have Sussy and Rob, for example, who have been animated across multiple different mediums, so you know this episode is pretty special. In fact, it is the third episode I've talked about where the animation is the forefront to why a Gumball episode is so great, and it is the fourth time in which the animation medium changed, those being the sweaters, the fury, and the money, as well as this episode of course, and I do have to say, one of the reasons I've been attracted to the amazing world of Gumball is because it has been able to translate and send the limits of an animated show. Many shows wouldn't do this, or maybe they would and it wouldn't be so seamless, but they were able to put their foot forward and do this. And now, even if any other show down the line does it, people will immediately think of Gumball. That's how legacies start. So Howdy and Frank pretty much guilt trip Darwin into not only missing them, but manipulating Darwin into wanting to repay these pieces of fabric back. I also want to give props to the voice actor of Darwin, one of them anyway, because knowing myself reading this script and messing up along the way takes up anywhere from 20 minutes to over half an hour and once I'm done I don't want to speak anymore for hours and hearing these voice actors do this especially with Darwin and his impressions is pretty admirable so Darwin promises to never let the puppets off his hand which leads to a pretty funny and under the radar joke and this weird scene with Rocky I do have to say the stuff with Rocky is kind of dumb and Gumball isn't necessarily a show that goes for dumb humor a lot it's pretty off-putting and I'd even go as far as to say it feels very forced. It's not like Rocky comes back at the end, and although I'm not the type of person to ascribe the word torture to a character just because they were written to receive pain, the fact that Rocky is the only one that is seen hurt and his role was for a joke like this, that didn't really work too well in my humble opinion. It seems very unfortunate for a show like this. It kind of feels like someone on the writing team wanted to go into the direction of Darwin messing around with the people in the school, using the puppets, and I can see something like 
like this happening. You can have Carrie try to play with the puppets, but they fall through her. You can have Carmen think the puppets are cool and one of them sticks to her cactus spines. You can even bring back the gag with Rocky and have them kiss again and maybe the same truck comes back around hitting Rocky within the school or even the truck driver steals Rocky away. And the point is that there's so many ways to go about this and the fact that they didn't do any of that or anything at all with the whole Rocky thing is actually quite disappointing. It feels halfway done in that particular case. We have Gumball letting out some steam to Darwin which involves him making fun of puppets which in this world can be uh and Darwin's new friends influence him to say a lot of insults to Gumball which like I said before very close to the earlier comedy of Gumball but in my opinion it just doesn't hit the mark the same way it used to. I can try to insult your face but I think nature's already done enough damage. So after Gumball hams it up, we get Darwin's puppets trying to give him reassuring words that he doesn't need to worry about Gumball anymore. Now as you know, Gumball is not going to play with the puppets, as he thinks he and Darwin have outgrown puppets. It's also very interesting that this is happening with Darwin and not Anais. I guess you can make the argument that Darwin loves to help people and has a bit more childish wonder than Gumball. I mean during the kiss, which was a very very early episode, Darwin was shown to see the world quite differently. Those are my socks! And keep it down, or Gumball will hear you. Did you say something? Whoa, man, it's called knocking. Do you have any sense of manners? Were you out there this entire time, or was Darwin just that loud? Either way, come on, man, have some decency. He could have had his feet out. He could have been doing something embarrassing, or even worse, he could have been watching an Alpha J video, and you made him panic and skip ahead. So he didn't get to hear about the time when Jay was getting out of the bathtub, he accidentally... You don't even have lungs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So we get in a neat mini fight before Gumball fully throws out the puppets. Darwin would explain that they're alive, but Gumball being the person he is, would just say that Darwin is too old for puppets and think that they're creepy throwing them away. Now, that is the first half of the episode, and here's when things get truly interesting. So we see the trash can lid pop off and the puppets are seen out. Now upon first viewing, I thought the puppets were sentient. Little do we know the parrots, parrot. Little do we know the puppets will become parasitic. They decide to take out their frustrations on the same game console that separated Gumball and Darwin from the puppets. Now I do have to say this is not the first time the games that Gumball and Darwin play turn out to be a lot more powerful than one may have thought. There was also the game in which they created Dodger Dare that resurfaced and ended up nearly killing all of them, including the rest of the family. It really makes you wonder about the type of beings Gumball and Darwin turned out to be if this was the type of entertainment they had growing up. They smashed the game console so loud that Richard, Anais, and Nicole don't hear it at all and Gumball blows into the cartridge that shows a great example of a joke that doesn't make logical sense but is funny nonetheless because cartoons don't need to be logical. I actually really like this scene leading into the actual live action puppet bit. I feel as though a lot of people really enjoy the puppet part and are looking forward to me talking about that part but the angles and sound choices really do ham up this particular scene to be something truly magical. The puppets have taken over Darwin and we get this scene here. Thank you, Master Gumball. I missed you greatly all these years. I'm not 100% sure why, but Grady has the most interest with me. I like how his character is monotone and calm, and he doesn't outright wear his emotions on his sleeve. Why would he want to help Gumball? If Gumball doesn't like him, and he clearly doesn't, and Gumball doesn't want to play with him, and Gumball wouldn't have if Darwin wasn't trapped, why would he want to help? We then get this transition here, into the don't hug me, I'm scared inspired portion of of the episode. And I gotta say the transition really needed work, but I feel like it was one of those situations where because of the jarring differences between the two types of mediums, any sort of direct transition wouldn't have really worked. We then get Gumball looking through the different things that he imagined as a younger Gumball. And I gotta say, it sounds just as imaginative as it would be for Gumball. I do like the meta humor of the hands, even though it's an obvious and cliche joke, but just because something isn't cliche doesn't mean it doesn't work. But 
But just because it works doesn't mean it isn't cliche. I feel like I've said that so much it needs to be on a t-shirt or something. I love the background and just like with the new Halloween episode of Spongebob, the environment seems up to par and worthy of a temporary chain. We get a very happy song from the other two puppets about how puppets will always have fun and, and specifically have fun with Darwin forever. In this gray room in which both of them show very slight and subtle signs of aggression. Like one of them slapping a cake out of Darwin's hand because he didn't make it right? I don't know. But I do know that Darwin does see that it isn't as fun as he thought it would be to live with the puppets. This actually reminds me of two things. Firstly, Destination Imagination. You know that special within Foster's home for imaginary friends where although Frankie enjoyed the world within the chest, she did not want to stay there forever. Also, this reminds me of another Foster's home episode in which Blue wanted to run his own imaginary friend home, but it really wasn't fun when he actually had to deal with all the work involved. I like although Frankie enjoyed the world within the chest, she didn't want to stay there forever. I like that both that and this dives into the topic of wanting to do this one thing, even though people would have advised against it and have, because this is somewhat what Darwin wanted. He wanted to play with the puppets and he wanted to give back, but maybe Darwin didn't want to do that forever. He just wanted to change, possibly take a visit down memory lane. And that spice of variety is a cornerstone of Gumball. It's one of the reasons I really like the show. And it's a cornerstone of, well, me, really. I mean, my mascot is a panda, but it's highly representative of the fact that I'm pretty much all over the spectrum. I couldn't stay to one thing for my entire run of YouTube. One day, maybe I want to talk about this new thing and another day I don't. And I said this in my money review, so I won't go too deep into that again. But it just shows that Gumball has that inner layer that I will always enjoy. Wait, what's that? The end of the fun. I've heard that some people consider this a cop-out, but considering that Gumball and Darwin were blown away with the fact that these beings think for themselves, it isn't out of plausibility to say that they weren't thinking straight. But I do agree that for the hype surrounding this episode, an ending like this isn't necessarily a 10 out of 10. So Darwin viciously rips off the arm of Grady, gouges the eye of Howdy, and Tauntaun the plush out of Frank. To be frank, it isn't as graphic as I make it seem, but it ends with an explosion and a joke about the puppets possibly coming back in the future. And that was the puppets. I remember when people were foaming at the mouth telling me that Mimic Madness was one of the best episodes of Spongebob. And as much as I liked the episode, it did not live up to the hype. I remember when people were foaming at the mouth telling me about the anime scene in the Fury and telling me that was one of the best moments in Gumball. And as much as I liked that scene, it did not live up to the hype. I remember when the puppets was one of the most talked about things in Western animation at the time. And as much as I liked the episode, it actually did kind of live up to the hype. I love the episode episode and so far it's one of my favorite episodes in season 5. Although I don't have that many good ones to choose from. I love how Gumball collaborates from time to time with other companies and it keeps the animation fresh and leading in terms of TV animation. I can't think of many that are on par with Gumball. Overall the episode is fantastic and if you haven't already checked it out I highly recommend you do. But what do you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you think the whole don't hug me I'm scared parts were actually worth the hype? Also if you know of any references or possible theories or connections to the web series, it would be fantastic of you to share. Make sure to vote on the next community poll, follow me at the Alpha J Show for the latest and greatest and don't mention me I'm lazy tweets, and join my discord for talking about animation, memes, and the occasional voice chat with yours truly. The links for those, my other social media accounts, and the request page is in the description below. As you saw, this was a request, and so was Kids Next Door, DuckTales, and Mimic Madness, so I am taking them. The request is always in the card in all of my videos, the eye with the circle that's on this video here, and in the description below of all of my future videos. If you really like this gumball review, you should check out the rest of them. It's one of my favorite shows to talk about. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon. As always, I hope your time is well spent, and Alpha out.